Now let's go ahead and talk about networking using Combine. Now you can still see that we're in the playground. Uh, once we learn about networking in this section, then in the next section, we'll try to see how we can integrate our Combine into a UI kit application as well as a Swift UI application. But right now our focus is just to get started with networking in Playgrounds. So the first thing we need to do is to find some sort of a URL that we can invoke. All right, so let's go and find the URL and we'll be using JSON placeholder. So JSON placeholder, as you can see, is a website and it allows you to consume some dummy data. If you scroll down, you'll be able to see some different resources. They're like different six different resources you can consume. Posts, comments, albums, photos, to-dos, and users. So let's go ahead and check out posts. So this is what it looks like. If your display is a little bit different, uh, then I'm using Chrome browser with a plugin called JSON View. So make sure that you download JSON View and what JSON View actually does is allows you to look at the output in a much nicer way. As you can see, it's nicely formatted. So that's because of JSON View. So when we're looking at the post, we can see that it has a user ID, ID, title, and body. So what we need to do is to create these different objects, meaning we need to create an object that can represent these things. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy these things, go back to the code. And the reason that I'm copying it simply is because I want to create a struct that can represent the data that is coming from the service. So I'm just gonna go ahead and say post and we will make it codable so it can be encoded and decoded. We will have a user ID, which is integer, ID, which is also integer, title, which says string, and I believe the last one is body, which is also string. So this particular post structure would be able to consume the JSON that is being returned from the JSON placeholder. Okay, next we need to consume it. So I'll import combine. All right, great. Now, in order to consume this, we can go ahead and create a particular function, fetch post, all right? And it's going to return us something. Now, what it's going to return will be the important part. And it's not going to return us an array of posts because we are using combine. What we want to do is we want to return a publisher. So I'm gonna return any publisher and we're gonna take talk a little bit about like what exactly is any publisher, but we are going to return any publisher. And the first one is the type, like what exactly the type you're gonna return. So if you look at the array over here, you can see that the result is actually returning you an array of posts. So that is exactly what we want to return. So we'll return an array of posts struct that we created earlier on. And the other one is the error. So it can actually error out, okay? So that is something that we want to return. Now let's pause over here for a moment and understand what exactly is this any publisher. So any publisher over here that we are returning is simply a type in combine that represents a publisher of a specific output type and the error type. So the output type in this case is the array of posts and the error type in this case is just a kind of like a normal base class of error, all right? So if I go over here, you can see that it's basically just a base protocol for error. All right, so it can be any error in this case, all right? But the main thing over here is that the publisher that you're returning, it's not really telling us any specific type of publisher. So this means that this is a type, this uses type eraser, and it allows you to hide the specific publisher type and expose it in a more generic type. So this any publisher is a more generic type because we don't really know what kind of a publisher you're gonna return and it allows you to 
different to return different publishers uh, and maintain the you know the interface like this fetch post is not really going to change if you are going to return a url session publisher versus something else publisher that's because uh, any publisher is going to wrap it around uh, erase the type kind of like put it in a box and then it's going to send that out so it's going to erase the type or it's going to wrap around the type so the final type that is being returned is always any publisher okay so starting with this we still need to return something so the first thing we need is some sort of a url so let's go ahead and get the url so i'm going to say url and we can say url we just create a struct over here and pass in the url over here we can unwrap this kind of like this because we will be passing an actual url we're not going to make a mistake over here so let's go ahead and simply pass this url if you want to use a guard over here that's perfectly fine okay all right now we can use url session so url session dot shared dot data and over here you can see that the url session does contain a lot of different ways that you can perform the call networking call the data task you have data task if you're using async and await but they also have something called data task publisher that actually takes in a url and returns you a data task public publisher so it does return you a publisher all right just like with the map function remember the map function that we learn about in the tri map all of those are available on the publishers but instead of returning an array of type they return you a publisher so we can go ahead and call that we can pass in the url that we have and whatever it's going to return whatever kind of a publisher it's going to return we are just going to return that publisher all right but hold on a second because right now we still have to do some work so next up we will map the data so whatever the data is coming in we're going to map the data so we can say over here the keypad that we are trying to map is a data so whatever the data task publisher is going to return that will be a tuple and we are mostly interested in the data because that contains the actual thing so we'll map the data we'll get access to the data and then we can decode it okay so we're going to decode it to post array so that's why i'm saying over here post array dot self that's the type because from the server we are returning an array that's the array of post this is one post this is second post and so on for the decoder we're just going to use a json decoder so let's go ahead and use that decoder great now this is the important part which is saying receive on so receive on simply means that it specifies uh, that on what thread we are going to be receiving the data on so receive on we're going to go ahead and pass in uh, scheduler or in this case dispatch queue dispatch queue dot main so this means that the data will be returned on the main thread if you remember if you were not doing combine and you were simply calling the url session in more of an imperative code then you have to this is happening in the background and if you have to do something if you want to refresh something on the ui then you have to switch to the main thread and then assign it to the ui elements right so the receive on is going to give you that advantage because it's telling you that when the data is received it will be received on the main thread so you don't really have to switch the thread to assign it on on the main thread it's already on received on the main thread and then finally we'll call erase to any publisher so what is this erase to any publisher well erase to any publisher Kind of like the any publisher part the erase to any publisher which is this one right there is an operator in combine and it can be used to convert a publisher to a specific type of any publisher so the main reason of erase to any publisher is to hide the specific type to make it a little bit more abstract so it is to any publisher where he's saying that well i'm going to return or 
into, I was just going to put it in a box and then going to return it so that it will be any publisher. I don't know what publisher it is, but it's going to be some sort of a, any publisher, like more of an abstract type. All right. So this is how we will be returning from our fetch post. So fetch post now is a function that basically consumes a URL, going to get all the posts, and then going to return you uh, some sort of a data, which in this case can be an array of posts. So we created the fetch post function, but how do we actually use this, right? So we can go ahead and call fetch posts. And fetch post, what it is returning? It is returning a publisher. So this means if it's returning a publisher, you can go ahead and subscribe to it. So I can go ahead and say over here, sync, and I can receive the completion and receive the value. All right, so I'll get access to the completion and I can perform different cases over here. So switch on the completion case if it is finished. Now, if it's finished, then you can go ahead and update the UI. Now, we don't really have any UI, but if you did, you will perform the update to the UI over here. The other case would be the failure. Something bad actually has happened. So obviously you will need to let the user know something bad has happened, log the error and whatnot. Receive value, we're gonna get the post. And over here, we can go ahead and display all the post. Now keep in mind that the receive value is fired first and then eventually finished or failure is fired next. All right, so once we receive the value, if everything is good, then finish is fired, and then this is where you can perform an update to the UI. If uh, receive value fires something as a problem, uh, then obviously the failure will be fired. Now, since this is going to return a subscription, we need to make sure that we are saving that subscription somewhere. So let's go ahead and make sure that we save it. We're gonna go ahead and Cancelables, we're gonna create cancelables. This is a different way. I think we have already seen it maybe once or twice, but we're creating a set of cancelables. And the reason that we're creating the set is that we can call store in cancelables. So this will automatically be canceled. We don't have to worry about too much that, oh, the subscription was not canceled after it was done because it will be, when the time comes, it will be canceled automatically. All right, now, Let's go ahead and run this. And there we go. You can see all the data is actually output on our screen. You can see the array is outputted with the title and everything. And if I go at the bottom, you can see that it does say update UI, which is the finished got called because there was no error and everything was working perfectly fine. So this is how you will perform uh, or you will use Combine to perform networking calls. Now, another thing that which is very important is the receive value is receiving these posts, right? And in normally, when you receive post in an async, and act, async action, you update the UI using this approach. You do something main.async because you need to switch the thread. Now, in this case, you don't really have to do any of that stuff. And the reason, let's go back, the reason for this is that the receive value is on the main thread already. So once we do the receive value, once we consume the receive value, it's already on the main thread. So we can just simply assign it to our you know, table view or whatever we want, and then we can perform the update of the UI, like finish can call the update and then it will perform the update of the UI. So that's a really cool thing about using combine that we can ask combine, we can call a function receive and we can tell it that yeah, receive on the main thread. When you get the values like array of post, you put it on the main thread so that the UI can update easily. And that we have already seen that it's very, very beneficial. So this is how we will use basic combine with uh, performing a network request. Now let's go ahead and talk a little bit about error handling and retries 
uh, when we are working with networking with Combine. 